Hey everybody, this is Kendall King with KCK CPA and today I'm going to bring you a segment of Lights, Camera, Accounting. So this one is very relevant to today. I kind of wanted to be able to give somebody some context um, while also referencing a movie so that it might be a little even easier to explain that way. So the movie we're going to be talking about today is called Margin Call. Margin Call was a movie that came back uh, in like 2011 and it essentially is trying to give a recount. Um, it's very inspired by the things that happened um, in the 2008 crisis. I'll speak more on that later in my Paper Promises podcast. For now, let's just think about this movie and what it was about and how we're connecting it today with um, the whole Silicon Valley Bank um, demise. So Margin Call starts with HR firing a whole bunch of people. And among those people who they're firing is the head of risk. Um, and so this particular investing investment fund, um, this investment bank, they have risk managers there to make sure that they're properly understanding the risk for the investments that they had. And their job, this risk manager's job, is solely to understand how much investment risks you know they're they're having with the investments that they you know have in their portfolio the thing about banks is that the money that you deposit into the banks they're using that money and going and investing that into other investment sources through giving out loans to people through buying um, securities or bonds and they use that money that's how they make their profit on top of the non sufficient fund fees and everything like that which is insane that's another conversation margin call looks at the firing of this head Exec, and he gives a flash drive to you know one of the remaining people uh, analysts that are there and the analyst determines and figures out that you know a lot of the investment securities that they have specifically within the mortgage backed um, securities they realize that these things have no value now back in 2008 you know the financial crisis that happened it was a lot of people were getting mortgages you know just like that um, I'm actually I was indirectly part of that because uh, my mother had a you know um, was there around that time and was able to secure um, a house for for us and um, for you know her family her sisters and um, that created a bubble because all those loans that were given out, a lot of people were even actually making things up, you know, saying that their dog was a person and they were getting houses that way. It was just, it was insane. It was really insane. Like literally a dog had a house and it got through underwriting, it got through everything. They were just pushing everything through. And so obviously with that, what happens is all of those mortgages, when people start defaulting on it, they don't have anything to really go back on. And you know, all this money that the companies and the banks are investing into these mortgages, mortgage-backed securities, realizing that, that it's gonna be defaulting over and over again, you realize that the security is then worthless. So in the movie, what is happening is they find out, hey, this is worthless security that we have on our books. No one else has really pieced this together just yet, but we just realized that. And now they have a choice, either sell everything or come clean and let people know what's going on. The two choices that you have is sell everything, but you're selling assets that you know is worthless, that you know does not have a, uh, a good market value, but you're selling it. So that there's an ethical um, implication there. And then, you know, obviously coming clean on what's going on will tank the company and, you know, destroy everything. And so they are plagued throughout this movie to figure out what will they do. And ultimately they choose to sell everything, mislead the public, mislead every, all of their relationships, knowing that their relationships would, um, be tarnished a little bit, but they would still come out, um, healthy at the end of this, you know, after everything is done, because once they start dumping everything, people are going to be like, why are y'all dumping that? You know, why is this going on? And then they're like, hey, you know what? You're selling me bad stuff. And then, you know, then everybody starts getting wind of it. And then a huge sale, you know, of all the assets is what's going to go down and the value is just going to go down. But they were able to offload everything before, you know, that that loss would have taken them out. In one part in the movie, they say that if the, the value of the security or this investment goes down by like 25%, that loss alone will be more than the market capitalization of the company. And so that's just a very quick way to explain how severe the situation was. And come to find out, some people already knew about that ahead of time. It's a lot of stuff that is really um, over the normal person's head 
but realize that you know you have to understand a little bit of this in order to you know move forward so we're going to bring that back to real life and we're going to connect that to silicon valley bank their name has been in the news a lot and you're probably wondering why what's going on another bank failed the, the largest since the 2000s and the biggest one for a lot of young professionals including mine um, in our career silicon valley bank is a bank specifically niched out to help founders and startup companies and so a simple process will generally work is i'm raising some money in silicon valley the investors who like my idea say here's a million dollars here's a hundred million dollars but if we give you this money you're going to need to put it in silicon valley bank the reason why you do that is because there's um, better you know price loans interest rates or you know they may have some type of connection with that bank it's a lot easier a lot smoother and it just really became the preferred bank for founders and investors and so taking that and understanding that the money that they're um, loaning out are to these startup companies and startup companies are very risky they don't necessarily know if they're going to have a profit or not um, or what's going to happen and so a lot of these loans are very risky therefore they try to diversify that risk by putting that money into mortgage-backed securities treasury bonds something that doesn't have as much risk but then again also doesn't have that much um, reward on the end of it they started getting these securities back um, in 2019 before the pandemic pandemic comes people getting told to sit at home so they cannot work they still need to pay their rent some shape form or fashion they still need to eat so obviously a lot of the funding that came through from the government to put money into the pockets of the people and the businesses that couldn't perform um, and, but they still needed to survive all that money went to them a lot of people started hoarding money putting that extra money into the banks and that happened a lot not to mention the whole push and the crypto sector getting a lot more venture funding around that time and so there was a lot more more money put in the hands of founders and investors and they're starting to put that money into this and SVB Silicon Valley Bank now Silicon Valley Bank was just like it's a lot of money what are we gonna do with it we don't want to just keep giving these out as loans because that's very, very risky so we're gonna put them into Treasury bonds into mortgage-backed securities the problem was they did long-term bonds and long-term securities mortgage-backed securities and they couldn't change out those rates so that when interest rates started rising as a result of the government trying to fight inflation um, and slow down the buying um, power of uh, of people's dollars. Essentially, what that is is all of those you know securities that they had are now generating income at a lower rate, and it's not being they're not getting the money back that they should be. And again, I'm trying to put, make this in as clear, plain terms as possible. So essentially, they start getting these losses on their securities. Now, the problem with that obviously is you have a loss. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to lose all that money right away but clearly you have to show that on your financial statements and being a bank there are certain requirements and regulations that you need to abide by certain limits and certain amounts of deposits in order to stay in um, business as a bank so now that they were nearing this you know this this limit where they needed to make a change they decided to sell some of those assets to cover some money and then they were going to raise from other investors uh, some money so raise some capital so that they can have enough to stay within the bounds of what you know they were you know required to stay within however people got wind of it start looking at the balance sheet started looking at their you know income statement the financial statements and just say you know what this is a little risky for me and so these investors are calling the founders of these businesses and saying hey take your money out of SVB because they started doing that SVB is a very tight knit group of people is a small community and so if one person is going to do it they're going to tell their friend hey my investor told me to pull my money out so you should probably do the same thing and that's what causes the bank run where everybody's running to uh to svb and trying to pull out their money before it collapses that is the initial problem that happened because that bank run happened a huge amount of money left the accounts um which left them in a deficit and then therefore the FDIC stepped in to basically regulate what's going to happen next and because of that again there's just more people trying to get the money out the sad thing about it is that a lot of people have more than the FDIC insured amount in there which is two hundred fifty thousand dollars so with the bank accounts if you put a million dollars into one bank account only two hundred fifty thousand dollars of that is actually insured and so the remaining 750 is now exposed to a potential loss 
if they can't scramble up enough funds to pay it back. And a lot of companies are feeling that direct hit and a lot of people will start feeling the indirect hit of that. Just thinking of the first case scenario, again, connecting it to crypto or, um, you know, in entertainment, you know, the, the things that I like the most. But you had money in SVP, you have a direct exposure to what is happening. Clearly, if you have more than $250,000 in that bank account. But then also anybody who has or does business or interacts with people of these businesses also have an indirect problem because you could be affected by that. Case in point, just go to the crypto space because that's where I'm in. USDC is a stable coin that had money. So every stable coin that you have, every USDC is backed by a dollar of fiat money, US dollar. But I believe about $10 billion of those backed, um, that backed those back dollars were sitting in SVB. And not all of that clearly was insured. And so because people knew about that, they started realizing that then now they're gonna start, they start bank running the crypto and say, hey, I wanna get rid of all my USDC and I'm gonna switch it into something else, either into fiat or into another stable coin that doesn't have this problem or into some other asset so that, you know, um, when the USDC eventually depay, they're not losing money. I believe the last time I saw it, it was at like around 90 cents. And so that 90 cents, you're only able to get 90 cents of the dollar that you would have, you know, had originally, which is not the point of a stable coin. The stable coin is to keep it stable across, you know, both things. And so in this instance with SVB failing and not being able to provide the services that they were supposed to provide, this left all these other companies exposed, not being able to pay the payroll, not being able to pay their vendors, not being able to have access to that money to do the things that they want to do. And so similar to margin call, you have this this question of like, did they know about this? You know, what's going on? How is it, you know, going to end? Where everybody's gonna be, um, you know, landing at? So if you are interested, you can follow the Paper Promises podcast that I have, which I'll be just discussing more intimate facts about the case and, and the things that are developing from it. Again, always from an accounting point of view, just seeing how things shape up because there are a lot of companies, again, who are directly affected and those companies who are. Um, indirectly affected through the companies that, you know, um, have banked with Silicon Valley Bank. We'll discuss all the different things that can come of this, the shakers, the movers and everything, and what could, you know, potentially end up for, you know, everyone involved. But back to margin call, with everything that we do, we want to highlight the accountants who were, you know, on the show to help make this, you know, particular movie um, come to fruition. They won several awards, you know, best screenplay, um, had an all-star cast, and it really just showed the decisions that people make, the decisions that, you know, these other people are making that a lot of people don't know about. I believe it was a teen in the movie. It was one of my favorite lines where he goes and says, none of these people know what's going on. And I'm gonna give you that scene. The quote of the movie, delivered from Zachary Quinto is, look at these people wandering around with absolutely no idea what is about to happen. It's a powerful quote, and it just really goes to show how a lot of people put finance and accounting to the side and just, you know, think it's all over their head, but you're literally going around with not understanding how things affect, you know, um, these decisions and that other people are making are affecting you. And so that's the whole point of Paper Promises and what I'm doing here is to get you guys in the know. Remember, like, comment, subscribe, and follow and subscribe to the podcast as well for more up-to-date information. That's a wrap for me, and this is Lights, Camera, Accounting. Thank you.